the Golden Sheng, a Meow Folktale, narrated by Teresa Garcia, from Chinese Folktales, collected by Louise Anyuan C. Guo. Two and a half million Meow people are scattered throughout Hunan, Guangdong, Guangxi, Yunnan, Guizhou, and Sichuan provinces. A southern minority, the differences in apparel, headdresses, and ornaments are fascinating. Although all minorities dress in a distinctive style, the Miao costumes are outstanding. The embroidery on them reveals the women's artistry and incredible skill. Her skirt and blouse, a man's sash, often presented to the man of her choice as a pledge of love, and all sorts of articles for daily use are embroidered. The sheng, the musical instrument that the Miao sang and danced to, was a most ancient one. The Chu Dynasty Book of Rites mentioned it as being used during the ceremonies for the worship of heaven, earth, and the ancestors, for rites performed for the four seasons, and supplications for rain and a good harvest. It was used as a solo instrument, but low or medium-pitched pipes have now been designed for orchestral work. Generally made of bamboo, the pipes vary from a foot to two feet. The sound is produced by blowing and sucking air through a brass cup-like base that claps the pipes. The dragon was the oldest known symbol in China and was worshipped as the rain spirit that controlled the springtime. It was a symbol of fertility and rebirth and was regarded as a beneficent creature. But when the sovereign of the Yellow Earth District ruled, he chose the dragon as his imperial emblem. The defeated chieftain of the southern tribes had the phoenix as his emblem. Others had the tortoise and unicorn. These creatures were reclassified during the Han Dynasty according to their importance, and the dragon was elevated to a supreme position that signified not only the imperial power of the sovereign, but stood for the Han people themselves, a racial distinction. Therefore, as in this folktale, the southern tribes generally depicted the dragon as evil and cruel. To them, it stood as a symbol of the victorious Han and the hated official with whom there were many conflicts. And with that, the tale of the Golden Sheng. There was once a mother and daughter who lived in a hut on a hillside. The little girl liked to dress in red, which is the color symbolizing happiness, so she was called Little Red Maiden. One day when they were working in the fields, a gust of wind suddenly came from nowhere. A frightening dragon appeared in the sky, snatched the maiden, and flew toward the east. The mother heard her daughter's voice drifting with the wind faintly calling, Say, Little Red Maiden, depending on little brother, Mama, remember her. The helpless mother could only shed tears. I have only a daughter. Where is any younger brother? She sobbed as she stared at the vacant sky. Dragging herself along in a daze, she stumbled homeward. Halfway home, her hair caught on a mulberry branch. While disentangling the strands, she noticed a bright red mulberry and automatically picked it and popped it into her mouth. After a few days, she gave birth to a round-headed little boy with rosy cheeks and named him Mulberry Boy. He grew so fast that within a short time, he was as big as a lad of 15. The mother often thought of sending him to save his sister, yet she was reluctant to have him encounter any danger. So she just wept each day in secret. But one day, a black crow flew to the eve of their hut and sang, Your sister is suffering. Your sister is suffering. In the evil dragon's cave, tears cover her face, blood stains her back, her hand drills the rock. Your sister is suffering, your sister is suffering. Mulberry Boy heard the song and asked, Mama, do I have a sister? Yes, my child. Your sister was fond of wearing a red dress and was called Little Red Maiden. She was seized by a wicked dragon who has already killed so many people, she replied tearfully. 
I'll kill the evil dragon. I must save my sister. Save all the people, he cried out as he picked up a big wooden stick to go in search of the dragon. He journeyed until he reached a path on the hillside where he saw a large pointed boulder. There was no way to pass except to climb over it, but if not careful, he would slip and injure himself. This is a tiger by the wayside. It will harm many people if I don't destroy it, Mulberry Boy thought as he took his stick to give it a whack. There was a crack, but nothing broke except the stick. Thereupon, he crouched low, used both hands to push with all his might, and sent the boulder rolling down into the valley. Ah, a dazzling golden sheng was revealed exactly where the boulder had been. He picked it up and began to blow on it. What a brilliant, melodious sound. Suddenly, the earthworms, frogs, and lizards all along the roadside began to dance. And the faster he played, the faster they danced. As soon as the music ceased, they also stopped. Hmm, now I have a way of dealing with that noxious dragon, Mulberry Boy thought to himself, and kept on walking until he reached the edge of a big, rocky mountain where the ferocious evil dragon could be seen curled up in front of a stone cave. Nearby were piles of bones and skulls and a girl in a dress of red. Her cheeks were stained with tears, and in her hand was an iron pick that she used to chisel the cave. The dragon used his tail to flip against her back while he sang. Wah, wah, foolish maiden, to marry me you say nay. Drill, drill, drill away, drill the rocks every day. Unable to chisel through the mountain, your life I will not spare. This maiden must be my sister, Mulberry thought and called aloud. Evil dragon, evil dragon, torturing my sister. Day after day I will play on my golden shang. Never will I stop, and your life I will not spare. Mulberry boy then began to play, and the wicked dragon involuntarily began to dance. Little red maiden threw away the pick and ran to watch. She wanted to converse with her brother, but he raised his hand to quiet her. As he played faster and faster, the dragon stretched his back and whirled ever faster. Fire came from his eyes. Puffs of smoke rolled from his nostrils and sounds of exhaustion issued from his mouth. Oh, oh, little brother, stop playing, he pleaded. Don't torture me. I'll let your sister go. Spare my life. Now, how in the world would Mulberry Boy ever consent to stop? He kept on playing as he walked toward a large, steep cliff. The dragon followed, dancing and swirling round and round. There was a thunderous crash, and the dragon fell into a pond below. But this did not stop him from dancing. On and on he danced until he was so weary, fire streamed from his eyes, smoke billowed from his nostrils, and dreadful sounds of exhaustion came from his mouth. Ow, oh, ow, oh, little brother, spare me this once, he begged piteously. I'll stay in the depths of the pond and never commit any wrong. Evil dragon, you evil one, listen to what I have to say. Stay at the bottom of the deep pond and don't ever again dare to create trouble. The dragon nodded and promised. Mulberry boy stopped playing and the dragon slithered to the bottom of the pond. Mulberry Boy then took his sister's hand. Both smiled happily and walked away. But they had not gone far when they heard a sound like a thunderclap, and turning around saw the dragon emerging with claws outstretched to pounce on them. Little Red Maiden counseled her brother, When digging a well, dig deep. When weeding grass, dig out the root. As long as the evil dragon is alive, he will harm people. Mulberry Boy quickly went to the edge of the water to play the golden sheng. With that, the evil dragon involuntarily went into the pond, danced, twisted, and whirled to the tune of the music. Mulberry Boy played with ever-increasing speed for seven days and seven nights without stopping. The dragon finally collapsed and died and floated on the surface of the pond. The sister and brother laughed happily 
as they dragged the dragon's body home. When their mother saw them returning, she laughed until her mouth could hardly close. They used the dragon's skin to repair the roof, his bones as a post and beam to support the roof, and his horns for a plow. The fields were plowed so rapidly an ox was no longer necessary. They plowed many fields and planted great quantities of greens, and thereafter lived a comfortable, happy life. And that is the end of the tale of the golden shank.